So Terra Mint is having a 20% off site-wide sale starting tomorrow, June 30th, and I thought it would be a great time for me to go full clout goblin mode and do a ranking video of all the eyeshadows they've released in 2023. I am fortunate enough to receive the Terra Moon's releases in PR, so I'm able to test out all the shades and let you know my thoughts on them. This video is going to be biased in general, obviously, because I do receive PR from Terra Moon's. I have a relationship with the brand, do some paid work for them, as in I do swatches for their website. So just keep that in mind as I go through this video. It's been a few months since I've had these in my collection and I've had time to use them. I also want to say I don't think any of these are necessarily bad. It's 100% down to preference, what I'm inclined to reach for, what I find is the most versatile or exciting to me. So keep that in mind as well. I mean, even if we have vastly different preferences, maybe this will be useful to you because if I hate something, maybe you'll like it. You never know. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it I'm going to go in ascending order from worst to best if you watch my videos frequently you probably already know which one is in the first place but anyway let's go ahead and get into it I think I'm just gonna go down each row from worst to best and end up here at my number one favorite I'll do kind of like a speed review I'll explain why the shadow is in the place it is if you're looking for in-depth swatches eye swatches and comparisons I do have dedicated videos on both of the releases that are contained in this palette so I will link those below Low. You can also check out my Terra Moons playlist. Also, if you like ranking videos, give this a thumbs up so I know and I will definitely do more in the future. Okay, in last place, I have Dion. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this. It stains a very hot pink. I'm not opposed to staining when it's a shadow that I really like, but this just really isn't giving me anything. To me, the hot pink staining is not worth it. And not only that, but it's a very pervasive stain. Like, it's not one that washes off with just soap and water. It stays for a while, so I'm kind of regretting swatching this first. Okay, next I have Winter Sun. This is one of the, what I've called spiky chunky shade and this is just a preference thing for me i don't like this type of chunky formula from terra moons it applies very patchy and i don't enjoy reaching for it it is very high impact but to me that is not worth the amount of effort it takes to use this so it's just not for me i can see that this may be for someone but i'm not that person next in 25th place i have eras which sadly i thought this would be one of my favorites when i did the first impressions of this release but again it just has that spiky chunky formula and i just don't find myself wanting to reach for it i would rather reach for like ganymede from terra moons or mural from cleona if i want this spicy teal with orange to gold ships. This is just not one I feel inclined to reach for. Next, WR124. This is in 24th place. This just isn't doing much for me. It's a hot pink that shifts like gold and green. It's pretty, but I just, I don't know. If I'm going to use a hot pink, I have others in my collection that are more exciting to me. In 23rd place, I have Sirius. This is a cool tone, corally orange shimmer. I like Terra Moon's traditional shimmer formula. I don't have any issues with it. I'm just not fond of this particular tone of orange. It's just not one I feel inspired by, so that's why it's down here. 22nd place is Pollux. This is a yellow with orange to gold shifting sparkles. The formula is not my fave on this one. It's like chunky and dry, but not in a way that smooths out. It's a cool shade, but I just have not felt any desire to use it in a look. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not one that speaks to me or one that I feel inspired to use. Okay, in 21st place, I have Proxima. This one, again, is that spiky, flaky formula that does not smooth out. Depending on what I'm going for, I do think it's kind of worth the hassle because it's just such an intense, fiery, orange, red, gold. I don't mind taking the extra time to work with this just because I think the effect it creates is really unique. But as you can see, like I pretty much prefer the majority of the other shades from the last two releases over this. 20th place, we have Pistol Star, kind of the same situation. The way I found that's best to use this is to take like the tiniest, tiniest amount, like really scrape off your finger on the edge so you have like this much on your finger and very gently tap it on. And to me, it's like this is such an intense reflective flaky shade it almost feels counterintuitive to use it like that and i do have other eyeshadows that create a similar vibe and are a lot 
less hassle. So this one is just not my fave, but I did like the effect it created the few times I used it. Okay, 19th place is Galileo. Terra Moons has done a, a few shades in their recent releases that have this effect. It's like a blue or cool tone base, and then it has these sparkles in it that are spicy orange to gold. However, I think the other shades that have this effect, I think what made them so special is the contrast and depth between the base and the sparkles that overlay it. And in this one, they kind of get lost because they're all this mid-tone. So it doesn't really give that same juxtaposition and effect that the other shades. I'm talking Celestial Cloudscape and Milky Way, which is also in this ranking. So it's a pretty eyeshadow, but it's just not giving what the other similar eyeshadows to this are giving. Okay, here is, what are we at, 18? This is Adhara. This is just a blue shimmer. And this is not something I typically use, but I have found that when I'm going for a very particular type of vibe, this has been really useful. Look how pigmented and opaque it is. This is something that's fun to layer other shades over or use as a liner. Not something I would use on an everyday basis, but I think for what it is, it is a fantastic high quality eyeshadow. Okay, here is Calypso. I think this is great for an $8 duochrome or $8 or $9 duochrome eyeshadow. However, I'm not the person that's reaching for a blue eyeshadow like this on a daily basis. It is so, so similar to Star Sign, which is one of their existing duochromes, and I prefer that just a little bit more. I'm just not the biggest fan of this, but I also recognize it's a really beautiful shade for $9. 16th place is Jovian Storm. This is a kind of like muted red to orange to gold. I really like the texture and finish of this. I'm not huge into warm tones, so I'm just not feeling inclined to reach for it, but I do like this smoother but still sparkly formula. Raya is a really beautiful warm blue shade and I like that it can be sheared out. I think it's a great value for that duochrome price point, but it's just not as exciting to me as the other duochrome. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just not a tone I am reaching for on a daily basis and it's not as exciting to me. I have so many similar shades to this, so not my fave, but still I think it's really, really nice and a great value for that price point. Okay, Butterfly Nebula is in 14th place. I was confused about what the base of this is, but I do think it's actually an iridescent and it's really pretty, but it looks so similar on the eyes to Star Formation, which I'll show you in a little bit. And I prefer that one just a little bit more. The texture is kind of weird to me. It's like not one I've really seen before. It is chunky and it does smooth out to an extent, but not as much as like something like the Cosmos or that type of formula. Typically for a shade like this, I would use it to layer over other shades and this type of formula is, it doesn't lend itself well to that. It doesn't smooth out as easily and it kind of stays like thick and chunky, so not my fave. 13th place, Halo of Stars. You may be surprised if you know me to see an iridescent this low in my ranking. This is so intense and high impact. It's almost too intense for me. I think I prefer an iridescent that's a little bit more well-rounded, maybe has a little bit more nuance to it, but maybe maybe isn't quite as high intensity, reflective, and vibrant. I definitely see that there would be a market for this, and I think a lot of people would really enjoy it. But just for my current style and preferences, I'd rather reach for something that has some multi-dimensional sparkle and maybe isn't as like bam in your face high impact. 12th place is Serpents and I'm not a green eyeshadow girly, but this one is really pretty to me and I feel like the green almost dissipates and it just creates this beautiful wash of color. I think this is, once again, a really great value for that duochrome price point and you still, you get that Terra Moons experience where you have the shifty, sparkly shadow. This is a really cool one to layer over other shades. It's just greens are not my fave, so I could not in good conscience rank this any higher. In 11th place, I have Al Safina. And again, I really like this more smooth but sparkly formula from Terra Moon. I think this is really beautiful and a lot more user friendly than something than their more flaky shades, which when I'm looking for something low effort but still kind of like ethereal and shifty, this is a good one to reach for. However, it doesn't really have too much going on besides that main shift and I'm more inclined to reach for something that has multicolored sparkles or extra dimension to it so that's why it's not any higher but I do think this is a great addition to their lineup. In 10th place we have Voyager which is one that is so similar to a lot of other releases from Terra Moons but again in this very smooth but sparkly formula 
It's not a unique shade by any means, but I do enjoy this type of shade. It's a little bit easier to work with than the ones that have a super, super dark base. And I, I did a look using this as a collab with Newport Makeup, and I really liked the way the look came out. And I found I was able to manipulate it easily, so it has made me more inclined to reach for it lately. Ninth place is Castor, Castor, which is this chartreuse yellowy acid green shimmer. It's one of their traditional shimmers. Surprisingly, I've reached for this so many times. I know I just said I'm not a fan of green, but I feel like this is enough in that yellow territory that it makes me want to reach for it. It is so fun to layer other shades over and I feel like it's a lot easier to work with in a matte. If you have some of the more traditional like satiny shimmers, I definitely encourage you to play around with layering them. It's so much fun. This also makes a great inner corner shade or I've used it to kind of diffuse the edges of a look. Very versatile and honestly at a great price point. So I'm really enjoying using this. In eighth place, we have Star Formation, which should be a perfect shade for me in theory, but in practice, I don't know. I just don't really feel as inspired to reach for it as the ones in the top row. Um, I don't know if you can see what I was talking about earlier, but it is, to me, it looks so similar to Butterfly Nebula. When I was testing these out initially, I put one on one eye and one on the other, and I honestly could not tell them apart. Here, I think you can pick up on the difference in the base more, but I tend to use these as more like sheared out toppers. So to me, in the way I use them, it's almost redundant to own both, but I'm still grateful that I do. it did receive this collection. So I really enjoy this, just not as much as the ones in the top row. Okay, in seventh place, I have Titania, which is the other iridescent from the summer release. And this is like the more smooth version of Sublunar. Honestly, I was surprised I didn't rank this higher because look at it, it's so spicy, so shiny, but I think it's that same situation as Halo of Stars where it's almost too intense. I would think I would like it more if there was some different colored sparkles to break it up and make the finish a little bit less homogenous. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's, it's really, really beautiful. But again, it's one of those shades that's going to completely steer the direction of your look. It's one of those ones that I prefer to look at than to actually use. I love iridescence, but I'm preferring a bit softer or more sheer and sparkly ones and this is just like crazy intense so if you're looking for something like that i think you would really really enjoy this and if you were interested in sublunar from one of their previous releases but you weren't into the chunky flaky shades this would be a great one to pick up okay sixth place honestly i think objectively if this wasn't a matter of my personal preferences this is one of the best shades that terry has released but because this is my ranking i put this in sixth place and the reason why is because it's a bit deeper than I normally go for on an everyday basis. And it's quite similar in practice, or at least the way I use it to ultraviolet, which I'll go over soon. But look at how beautiful this is. It is this deep smoky purple that shifts pink to gold to green. It is so complex and multidimensional and smoky and sexy and fun. I really think this is a great release from Terra Moons. And if you're into this sort of thing, I think you would love it, but yeah, it's just not, I prefer ultraviolet over this. I think maybe if you have a deeper skin tone than me, you might, this might give you a similar effect that ultraviolet does on me. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay, in fifth place is Milky Way, which is also deeper than I would typically go for, but this is such a fun shade. And this is a better example of what I was showing you earlier with Galileo. So you can really see those sparkles popping out from that charcoal base. This is a chunkier shade, but I find it does smooth out easily and it's just so fun to use in a look. It's one of those ones that like, even though it's not typically what I'd go for, I'm so intrigued by it that I want to go out of my comfort zone and use it in a look. So fourth place is Halley's Comet. This is just absolutely insane. It is the most Barbie pink, intense, reflective eyeshadow, but it can be sheared out too. It's got that little bit of pieciness to it, so I can play around with how intense I want to go with it, unlike something like Titania. This has been so fun to play with layering. I prefer to apply it as more of a wash, but also you could do like the most intense hot pink one and done with this. I like that the base is not fully opaque, and it's just one of the most high impact, insanely shiny and reflective eyeshadows you can get at that duochrome price point. I think this is such an underrated one from Terra Moons. 
Okay, Ultraviolet is in third place, and I know my friend Catherine B. Beauty is still conflicted about how she feels about this, but I fell in love with this when I put it on my eyes. I put a, um, I did a look with it, and I paired it with the Viseart Petite Matte Cool Palette, and it was just the perfect match. It was so shifty on my eyes, and I just really, really loved the way it looked on me. And since then, I've felt inclined to reach for it several times. I just have a lot of fun pairing this with different tones, and I think it is unique to my collection. Collection. This like soft pastel lavender vibe is exactly up my alley and I love the texture. It is chunkier and it doesn't, it's slightly more chunky than something like the Cosmos, but I do find I'm able to smooth it out easily. And again, I'm just loving using this and I love the way it looks every time I add it to a look. Second place is Rosette. This one has snuck up on me as a favorite. This is one of their duochromes. And I love how subdued yet complex and grungy yet feminine and soft this is. It is so beautiful. I don't know if you can see, but there are so many different colored sparkles in here. I love using this and like layering things over it or using it as a topper too. It really can do so much and it makes a great one and done too. It's just to me like the perfect specimen for an everyday type of special eyeshadow. I have used this so much. I don't know if you can see the dip I already have in here after just a few months. It's kind of insane. I use it literally all the time. And number one, look at the dip I have in here. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know it has to be Enceladus. And I was the biggest hater of Enceladus at first. I was like, it's not even a multi-chrome. Like what is this doing? And I know I say this in every video, but if you're new here, yes. This is the best. This is my number one favorite Terra Moons eyeshadow. It has dethroned La Lune for, as my former favorite. It's just the perfect silvery, tealish, muted pastel tone. And it has these very subtle purple sparkles in it. Makes a perfect topper or one and done. Or honestly, it kind of functions the same way as rosette in that like what can it do it can do anything and it's one i have to like pull myself away from using just because i want to use it like every single day and i need to get through my eyeshadow collection and show all my eyeshadow some love but i love it it's a perfect example to me how like i have a crow brain and i'm drawn to things that are the most sparkly the most shifty the most reflective but on a day-to-day -day basis it's shades like this that i'm coming to time and time again that maybe wouldn't catch my eye initially but they just have so much value to me and I just absolutely adore them and I will never stop talking about them in every single video so yeah that's my ranking I will list them all in the description in the order I rank them so in case you want to refer back to it so you don't have to watch the whole video let me know if you have picked any of these up we all don't have the same preferences and that's what makes this fun we can talk about where you disagree with me or where you agree I would love to have a discussion going on in the comments let me know, do you plan to pick anything up during this Terra Moon sale? I would love to know. I'll also put the information about the sale. I know there's like a code you need to use, so I'll put that in the description, anything else I can find. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.